Hey there, so today I'm going to show you the first in a series of quick tip videos as well as doing my regular tutorial videos. I thought I'd start this series to help people kind of gradually improve their methods and technique. This is something I learned, I guess, through the process of using nose and scar wax and I wanted to share it with you today. Um, it's basically improving the edges of wounds. Hopefully you get something from this and enjoy. So what you'll need to follow along is some modeling wax. If you don't have this, there's a recipe for it on my channel. If you don't want to make it, you can just use regular nose and scar wax and add a bit of cream coloring to it. You'll need your skin illustrator palettes and you'll need the alcohol to activate those. You'll need some fake blood, some spirit gum, some petroleum jelly, just a mixture of sponges. You'll need your sculpting tools and you'll also need just a mixture of brushes as well. And that's it. To give this explanation a bit of context, what I've done quickly is I've just gone in with my colored modeling wax just to kind of simulate some tendons within the finger. What I want to focus on is actually the skin around the outside today. So one of the common problems I see people do is they normally get their nose and scar wax and they roll it out into a worm, I guess, just to stick around the outside. What I've seen a lot of people do is I've seen them roll this worm way too large and what happens is you end up with this big kind of unrealistic chunky thing sitting on the side of the wound. What you want to do is roll it out a lot thinner, probably about half this size here, and then grab a bit of spirit gum and put that down along the edge. And once that's tacky, grab the worm that you've just rolled out and run it along the edge and then begin to smooth it back down to your skin on one side like you normally do. And you can also put a bit of petroleum jelly on your fingers just to help you smooth it down. And once you've smoothed it down, just go back in with a stipple sponge or a bit of upholstery foam and dab over the top just to remove any shine. What I find is when you roll nose and scar wax out into a worm and then you flatten it back down on one side like this, what happens is you get a curved edge along the skin here. So what I do is I take the kind of crooked rounded line to my advantage, I guess, and just take a needle tool like this or something that's got a fine point on it and go back in and actually redraw the cut line. So now you've got a nice sharp line in there. And rather than go back in and try and remove all of this wax here, what I do is I go back in and I grab little chunks of it and I use those as body fat or to simulate body fat. Be careful not to damage the cut edge. If you want to, you can go back in now with a brush, just dipped in a little bit of petroleum jelly and go back in and smooth out those pieces there that you've left behind. What you should be left with now is a nice crisp line here where the skin has been cut and then some sort of inside blobby bits, I guess. And what we want to do is we want to turn those into body fat. So get the Skin Illustrator palette and just start with a light wash of yellow. So I just go in and lightly just paint over the top of those inside fatty blobs. And then once you're happy with the sort of fatty tissue, you can go back in now with a blood red color and just paint that inside edge. And this will help define the cut skin. Then the final step now is just to adjust that nose and scar wax and bring it back to your actual skin color. So to do that for me, what I normally do is just go back in with the rose adjuster and again start with very light washes and just kind of zigzag over the top of this nose and scar wax. So that's it there. I've got a nice crisp skin edge now with a bit of body fat seeping in from underneath. Hopefully you got something from this that you can incorporate into your makeups. Thanks for watching.